Why, hello there, YouTube, and welcome to a random review. I am Random Ross, and today I review Rise of the Planet of the Apes. So, yeah, we're into the recent site installments now. So, yeah, um, so this is uh, written by Rick. Jaffa and Amanda Silvers, directed by Rupert Wyatt, based the premise based on like Planet of the Apes, and of course it stars James Franco, uh, Frelda Pinto, John Lithgow, Brian Cox, Tom Fulton, and Andy Serkis. So this is basically a prequel to the classic Planet of the Apes franchise, where we see some apes captured at the beginning and then taken to a testing facility in San Francisco where this research company at, uh, you know, where um, James Franco's character works, you know, as a scientist trying to cure brain illnesses such as Alzheimer's, you know, creates a, a, like a serum, a cure, and tests it on chimps. However, there's one chimp that is born whilst its mother was pregnant with him, exposed to the cure, and she's highly intelligent. And out of a misunderstanding of aggression, she is shot dead, and then he finds the baby chimp Caesar and raises him and realizes that Caesar is no ordinary chimp. He is actually smart and intelligent. Tests the cure out on his father as well, who's got you know, Alzheimer's, and he gets better for a while. But his illness soon deteriorates again. Also, Caesar being protective of his family against their grumpy neighbour, Caesar instinctively attacks the neighbour but then gets taken to an ape's you know, enclosure where he is mistreated and abused. But also, you know, befriends an orangutan named Maurice and also the other apes and then eventually he you know notices that they're perfecting the cure now via a gas and caesar exposes all the apes in the you know in the enclosure to it and they get intelligent and then that's when caesar you know, says no to the abusive people working at the sanctuary and they start to rise causing riots throughout san francisco freeing apes from cages and stuff in zoos and that and they go on a violent rampage across San Francisco to get to these woodlands where Caesar will call home and there he stands tall and rises as a king and it's an emotional ending so let's get to my likes and dislikes what did I like about this well when I saw the trailer for it in 2011 I was like this looked good I went to see it and I was not disappointed I love the digital effects. Yeah, it's not practical like the classic movies, but this is meant to be a prequel how it began. So we see the apes, non-anthropomorphic, but CGI with Andy Serkis behind the motion capture, who we all know as Gollum from Lord of the Rings. He played King Kong in, well, King Kong, and he played Caesar in this. You know, must have been weird on set with his motion capture suit on, but the effects, um, in the finished film are just spot on brilliant. I love the character of Caesar as well and I love the character of Maurice who was actually named after the actor who portrayed Dr. Zias in the original uh, Maurice Evans. So I thought a nice reference there. I also thought the, the effects on the gorillas were good and the chimps and we meet that um, you know fellow chimp you know Koba who goes on to become the antagonist the yeah, the antagonist in the next one, which we'll get to. Um, and, of course, I also loved... You know, me, I was completely on the ape's side the entire time when they were rebelling, when they were causing their, you know, their revenge and stuff. I was on the side of the apes the entire time, and I thought the effects and the acting from our human leads in this as well were just fantastic. I loved the score. I loved, you know, even though this was kind of like a bit of a rehash of Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, I I felt that this also fell into its own original story. 
I like that it referenced spacemen going to Mars in it. And also, the ending. God, the ending to this one got me all emotional. You know, when Caesar fought his way through after being tortured and abused, you know, his fellow apes stood for him and he climbed up that tree and I'm getting goosebumps now just thinking about it. That, that end where he just climbs the tree and that music playing got me all emotional and I actually shed a tear as he stood on top of the tree and his apes followed. That was such a moving ending, you know, and it because it was a happy ending. It, it, like I say, it's rare in this franchise that the films have had a happy ending. I mean, the other one that's had a very positive ending was, you know, Battle for the Planet of the Apes. And this one, it goes all out and gives us a, a happy, hopeful ending for Caesar. Of course, there is the mid credit scene where the neighbour, who is a pilot, gets exposed to someone who tested the apes with the gas and of course we find that the gas on humans makes them sick and of course he gets sick and then the virus spreads around the world causing a pandemic leading it into the next one. Now of course when I watched this in 2011 I was like ah this is fiction we'll not get a pandemic like this again it's we've got better medicines now. How wrong we were well, how wrong I were and probably a lot of other people were, because, you know, nine years later, or eight years later, COVID. Anyways, um, yeah, I thought this one was just magnificent. I still think it's a good film. I think the effects have still held up for it. Andy Circus was just brilliant playing Caesar, even though I'm feeling, is he meant to be... A redo of Caesar from the original films or is he like a, just a coincidental chimp called Caesar which will happen in you know conquest I don't know I think this is also a reboot as well as a prequel so it's a requel uh, which I don't mind and I'm looking forward to seeing where this modern franchise will take it all because we got like I say I'm reviewing all these films in the build-up to Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes uh, so, um, do I have anything to dislike? No, I don't. I liked you know, James Franco playing his character who you know, cared for Caesar and Caesar cared for him. I liked his love interest in that. I love John Lithgow playing his dad who you know, is always nice to see in there. We had Brian Cox and Tom Fulton uh, play a father and son team. Um, who were, uh, you know, running the ape enclosure and, of course, Tom Fallon's character got a thrill out of tormenting the apes and to see his demise or see Caesar stand up to him, that bit was so satisfying when he just shouted to him, NO! And that whole scene as well where he's escaping and breaking the chimps and all the, or and the orangutan and all the apes free was just great. The whole, you know, like finale on the you know, Golden Gate Bridge, where chimps climb up and attack from above, and the orangutans attack from below, and Caesar has the gorillas, you know, create diversions on the bridge. That whole sequence was just amazing, especially when the gorilla jumped up at that helicopter, and we see a few of the other hum unlikable human characters get their just desserts. But yeah, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, just fantastic. I love it still. I'll give it a 5 out of 5. So there you go. There's my review today for this one. You know, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Do you think I think this is overrated? Do you think I, I like it too? I don't know. Let me know what your opinions are down in the comments below. But my personal opinion, I loved it. So yes. So there you go. There's my review for that one. Have you seen it? Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe. It's a few clicks for you. It means a great deal to me. But that choice is yours at the end of the day. I also have a horror channel if you love horror stuff as well. So that's down below. So yeah, until next time, I bid you all a goodbye, friends. Goodbye.